Hey guys, welcome back to another video. Today we're going to learn how to make coin blocks like the ones you see in 2D Mario games. This video is geared more towards intermediate Godot devs as you have to have prior knowledge on stuff like collisions, signals, GD script, and animated sprites. Don't let that scare you though because you can always stop and pause to figure stuff out or check out any of my other videos to learn more on these topics. I also want to say thank you so much for killing it on the support lately. It's been crazy. We are getting super close to 500 subs. So if you feel like I've earned it, drop a sub after you're done the video. Anyways, let's get into it. Okay, let's check out what we'll have by the end of the video. We're gonna have a block that has two states, one with a coin and one without. And we're gonna go through each one step by step. First thing we wanna do is we wanna create a new scene. We're gonna go ahead and add a node and that node is gonna be an animated body 2D. And we're gonna go ahead and give it the name coin block and we want to save that into our scenes folder. Once we've done that, we can go ahead and add two more nodes, the first being an animated sprite 2D, and the second being a collision shape 2D. We then want to go ahead and add new sprite frames, and we want to add two animations, one being our idle animation, and the second being our hit animation. And then we can add in our animation frames. Mine are 16 by 16, so I'll input that into the size property and select the frame. Now we can go and do the same with our hit animation. The only difference is, I'm going to select the other texture. And once we finish that, we can go ahead and add in our collision shape. I want to add in a rectangular collision shape, and I want to fit it to our texture. After we've done that, we can go ahead and add another node in. We're going to add in an area 2D, and we're going to name it Player Detection Box. We can then add our collision shape to that. And we want to fit it to be one pixel high, and that's basically going to be the area that detects our player's head. You can see if we come over to our player scene, our player's collision layer is on layer 2. So we want to make sure that our collision mask is set to 2 so that it's looking at our player. Then we'll go ahead and create our script, and we'll give it the class name of coin block. And then we have to go and connect our on body entered signal from our player detection box. So if we come down here and double click, we'll connect that. And now you see we have the function here. So we want to say if body is player, which is the class of our player, then we want to print a message and we'll say trigger hit animation just for an example here. And now let's add our coin block into our main scene. I have a scene collection here. If you don't have one set up, you can hit the plus button and add a scene collection. To bring our coin block into the scene, we just need to select our coin block and now it's in our scene collection. And if we click on that, we can add it in like any regular tile. Now let's hit play and go into the game. Now you can see if I jump and hit the block, we see our message. It's working perfectly. So we can go ahead and move on to the next step. We want to add in another node called an animation player. We're going to drag it to the top and we're going to give it the name block animation player since we're going to have two in this scene. We can go ahead and create an animation by clicking on the animation button and hitting new. We're going to name it hit and click OK. This is your timeline. We're going to go ahead and change the duration to 0.4 seconds and you can zoom into your timeline by using control on the scroll wheel. We're going to go ahead and create our first keyframe. Now that we have our animated sprite 2D selected, we can come over to the transform tab and you can see there's a little key here. If we click on it, it's going to say, do we want to create a new track? And we'll click create. And now we have our first keyframe created. If we go to 0.2 seconds and we'll move our block up by four pixels and then we'll click on the key and create our second keyframe. And then I want you guys to go to 0.4 seconds and reset the block's position and click on the key again. And now we have our animation complete. Now for the next step, we have to go ahead and do the exact same process to our collision shape 2D, but we're gonna speed through that super fast because we already know how to do it. For our next step, we're gonna go ahead and animate our collision shape for our player detection box. Our first frame on 0.0, .0 seconds will have our collision shape enabled, and then we'll advance a small amount by 0.02 .02 seconds and we'll go ahead and disable it. And then at the end of the animation, we want to re-enable that collision shape again. And now, if we come into our script, we can go ahead and add an at on ready variable that has access to our animation player. Instead of printing trigger hit animation, we'll actually trigger it. To make sure everything's working, let's head into the game. When we walk up to the block and click jump, we can see the animation gets triggered. Let's go. Now we can move on to the next step. Let's go ahead and add an audio stream player and we want to add in an audio randomizer. Then we can add in our block hit sound effect. And then all we have to do is change the pitch randomization. 
We'll change it to 1.1. And now when we click play, you can hear every time it's a little different. Adding sound effects to your animation player is easy. You just go over to the play property, click on the key, and then it adds it right into your animation player. The only thing is, is you have to double click on the keyframe and then make sure that play is enabled. So now when you press play, you can see it triggers that sound effect and it works in game too. Awesome. Next we want to change from our idle block animation to our hit block animation. And we can do that in the animated sprite 2D by clicking our hit animation and clicking on the key. Once we create that track, we can go to the game and check it out. Now when we hit the block, it switches. Perfect. For our next step, we're going to set up our coin. We want to add in another node, which is our animated sprite 2D. Once you've added that in, rename it to coin, and then we can set up our sprite frames. Since we've done this many times in other videos, we're going to speed through it. Once you finish setting that up, we can go ahead and add in another node. We want to add in one more animation player. Once you've gone and added that in, you can rename it to coin animation player. And then we want to set up our keyframes. Then we want to create an animation called spawn. Once we've done that, we can head over to our coins animated sprite 2D and find our way over to our transform panel. We then want to create a new keyframe on our position property. Once we click the key, we can create the track. And now let's figure out how high we want our coin to be. That looks about good. And now we can add that in. For our next step, we want to fade the coin out. So a little bit after it reaches the top, we want to head over to our visibility tab. And under modulation, we can turn the alpha value down and make the coin disappear. So let's see if that works. And that seems to be working perfectly. And the last thing we have to do is go down to ordering and change the Z index to negative one so our coin goes behind our block. And in our code, we can add our at on ready variable, and then we'll go ahead and play our spawn animation. And now let's head over to the game and see if it works. And yes, it's working, let's go. Now heading back to our main scene, we wanna go ahead and add another audio stream player. Once you've added it in, we can load our coin sound effect. We don't need a randomizer this time. Then click on the coins animation player and add the play keyframe. Make sure the play is enabled. Once you've done that, we can go into our code and we want to add a variable called isHit, which detects whether the player has hit the block or not. And we'll create a conditional statement that checks if the block isn't hit, then we want the coin animation to play, and we say isHit is equal to true. And then if it is true, we always do the block animation. So let's see if it works. So the coin goes once, and now it doesn't show up again. It's working perfectly. Now for our last step, we just want to add a little juice to our block. So we're going to go ahead and add a GPU particle 2D. We then want to add a particle process material. You'll see these little white squares start to spawn in. For our case, we do not want any gravity, so we're going to set that to 0.0. Once you've done that, we can head over to the spawn tab. And we want to change our spawn position to be a sphere instead of a point. So now our points will spawn anywhere within that radius. We then want to change our explosiveness to 1.0 and our randomness to 1.0, which allows all the particles to spawn in at the exact same time. Now coming back down to spawn, we want to go to the velocity tab. You can go down to initial velocity and set this to whatever you think looks good. With particles, it's all up to your own opinion. I'm also going to change the spread to 90 degrees. And now you can see my particles are flying all over the place. Now under display, we can go to the scale properties and change it to two times. This now makes all of our particles a little bigger. Now I want you to create a curve texture and click on that. And then you can actually click on the curve and now we can change the scale over the timeline of each particle. This is again is up to your own preference, but you can see the particles shrink as they reach the end of their timeline. Now that we've done that, we can go down to color, which is also underneath display. And you can see we could change the color itself, but we actually want to create a color ramp. If you click on that, you'll now see a gradient and you can change either of these colors by just clicking there. And again, it's up to your own preference, but I like how this looks. So we're going to stick with that. After you've picked your colors, we need to scroll down to the bottom of our particle and we need to go to ordering to change it to negative one. So the particles are behind our coin block. Last thing we need to do is change one shot to true. And now you can see when we admit the particles go off and that'll be useful for our code. Every time our player hits the block, we're actually going to be creating a new instance of our particles. So we want them to be their own scene. And we're going to save that in our particles folder. We can click on the scene icon 
and we can actually go ahead and delete that from our coin block scene. Now I want to add a script to this so we can clean them up after they're finished playing. We'll name it hit particles for its class name and under our ready function we'll have emitting equal to true. We'll await the finish signal and then we'll queue free when the particles are done. And then we want to have a preload so we'll have an add on ready variable for our hit particle which is a pack scene and we'll create a new function called spawn particle. We'll have a variable called h which is the instance of our particle. We'll add it to the scene tree and we'll set the position equal to the blocks position. Now in our animation player, we can actually add a track for method calls. We want to select our coin block, hit OK, scroll down, and if we right click on the timeline, we can insert a key. We then can type in the function name we want to call, which is spawn particle, and we can double click on that. And now that's set into our animation player. So if we hit the block, you can see the particles spawn in. And now everything's working. We've reached at the end of the video. Before we say goodbye, I just want to say thanks to everyone for all the support recently. I really appreciate it. If you guys like this video, subscribe and leave a like. If you have any questions or suggestions, leave a comment below. If you like this asset pack, you can find it on my itch.io page, link below. And until the next video, see you guys.